Once upon a time, there was a beautiful, healthy Catalianthus agri wax African beauty. Bloomed reliably, grew well. Then along came a grower who decimated her to this. This grower has tried in the past years to readjust the lecker and self-watering ratio for a Catalianthus, clearly with not much success. It is evident that this orchid isn't happy, never mind the best efforts of the grower. Despite her past being filled with utter utmost sadness, wishing the grower would wrap their heads around it, make her happy and healthy again, we are going to put all of that aside and we are going to make her future bright because today is the day where I have a single new root growing on this Catalianthe and she is going into lava rock and hopefully by 2026 <laughs> she will be back to her former glory and in this video I shall explain what went wrong and my general thoughts about Catalianthes in Lekka and self-watering. Before I get into this pot though, and I lose my train of thought, what I wanted to tell you is, first of all, thank you so, so much for watching. I know I'm gonna go off on a tangent the minute I get into that pot. So in my defense, what I want to say is, I grow cattleyas successfully in Lekka and self-watering over many, many, many years. I have a giant guarianthe growing fantastically, blooming regularly for many, many years, also in Lekka and self-watering. Why am I mentioning Catlias and Guarianthe? Well, a Catlianthe is a combination, an orthogenus of orchids that are hybridized between Catlia and Guarianthe genus. So we've got Catlianthe. With the exception of my latest acquisition, my Catlianthe White Bridal, my little fairy is in a similar state as my Zagarig Wax African Beauty, but she's only just now starting on a new growth. So I am not going to be repotting her today. And here we have another Catlianthe that doesn't appreciate lecker and self-watering, no matter my best intentions and switching things around. I have a feeling that despite the two parents being able to grow well in lecker and self-watering, when it comes to putting them together, evaporative cooling takes effect. The evaporative cooling of the lecker during the winter does have an influence on the root system. We know a wet dry cycle will work really, really well all the time, every time with these cattleyas. But my setup of lecker and self-watering does not allow to have a dry period. Even though I don't have the reservoir filled during the winter, all I do is flush the orchid. And if fertilizer is needed because she's an active growth, she gets a little bit. And yes, she was an active growth during the winter. And that would be the one right here that we're seeing here with the sheath still intact. That is her winter growth. Now I can also say my low light levels during the winter play a part. It all kind of is part and parcel of the puzzle as to why Catlianthus don't do that well so far in Lekka and self-watering. I know they can grow that well, but clearly the state of my orchid, the experimental phase is over. It's time to rescue her. I am not going to go into bark as I initially thought and possibly mentioned in some videos in the past when I was showing plans for the orchids of the year 2023. I was actually going to buy a bag of bark and then rescue her that way to then maybe in 2030 <laughs> get her back into lack and self-watering. Instead, I'm going to use large lava rock this way. I still have the benefit of water retention through the media that is lava rock in a super dry climate where humidity is next to non-existent while during the winter there is no evaporative cooling because the lava rock doesn't have those characteristics. So I believe I've taken care of the most important factors and my thought process prior to getting into the pot. <laughs> Let's get into the pot and have a look-see. In my assumption, we may have two or three viable roots, but the rest of the root system is a goner. I have one beautiful new root coming. I don't want it to get bruised. So far, that's the only one I've got. So we're going to have to be very, very mindful to be extremely gentle 
in getting this orchid out of the pot. So this is the new beginning. This is a reset. Let's get African Beauty back to her former glory. And hopefully those fantastic, fantastic burgundy deep red wine blooms that smell, ah, dare I say like cherries or something like that, sweet cherries, incredible. Anyway, I have not soaked the pot because I do believe I have mainly dead roots in here and there's no need to waste product. But what I want to do is keep Lekka away from that root tip. And if I have to, we're going to be using the tweezers to get Lekka out. That one root is its future. But I do see some branching in the pot. That looks promising. So we'll be a little bit more gentle than what I would normally do with a suspicious looking root system. Because normally, if there is a dead root system in the pot, why bother, right? <laughs> I really don't want to lose this orchid completely. Shake her out. Let's have a closer look. There we go. Lots and lots of dead roots, but there are some slivers of life, which we will try to safeguard and take over. Meanwhile, when they go into the lava rock, they may die anyway. So our one new root is super importante. This one looks nasty, but it's firm. And they can also be firm, but extremely, um, yeah, they're gone, <laughs> but it's still firm. <laughs> it's a branching root system, so there's hope. Once a new root system establishes itself, that it can actually become vigorous again. I have been looking forward to this project <laughs> since the winter of 22 and 23. <laughs> so happy to see that one root come out. I had a few distractions and I was like, no, don't grow fast. Not yet, not yet. Let me do what I need to do before you start growing vigorously. <laughs> now I'm not expecting to get many roots. Catlianthin normally throw out maybe three roots four if you're lucky but the fact that they branch is a big bonus can you believe it look at what i just did this orchid hates me and i don't blame her one bit she doesn't have many leaves and the one she grew i just snapped off my goodness at this point this orchid probably thinks why bother the grower isn't exactly being kind to me and i'm like yeah i know that you would get that impression i fully understand and i don't blame you i don't want to take off too much of this root system because going into lava rock i love lava rock as a media but when it comes to repotting it is a uh, it really damages root systems. So I'm not wanting to go all the way to the base of the orchid so that I can maybe get some roots to grow along the older roots, which are also kind of humidity providers. And when it comes to repotting, which I'm gonna think positively that we will repot her, at least then the new roots will maybe have a buffer, that cushion of dead material, and the lava rock will come off a little bit easier. So this is not going to be a cleanup all the way to the rhizome. Lava rock really, really does a number on root system when it comes to repotting. It shreds them. When it comes to bifoliate orchids, <laughs> as I mentioned, yeah, they're not that generous root growers. The Guarianthe is a generous root grower. Maybe the Catlia parent here for the Zagarik Wax African Beauty is the one that isn't that generous of a root grower. So she did not take happy, long, vigorous root system characteristics from the Guariantha parent. That's for sure. But then again, the Guariantha is also so, so much bigger of an orchid. So there is that. Very tempted to cut off this pseudobulb because nasty looking. She is also a mealybug magnet and a scale magnet. I find that many Catlianthes are. Whereas when you look at the Guariantha, it's mainly clean all the time. 
very strange to have this not the genus be the way it is. And once again, for me, it's just, oh, it's a bifoliate. So what else is new? I'm not gonna cut the pseudobulb off. I may use that to tie the support to. And that is it. I'm not doing any more. Let's get the lava rock, the new pot, etc. If this were to be bark, it would be large bark. When I say large, my pieces are about three centimeters, four centimeters, chunky. Let's say chunky bark as an alternative. Now, normally I fill water in when I'm dealing with a good root system, when I'm working with LECA because the buoyancy of the water, the LECA just falls neatly, nicely, and very gently in and around an existing root system. Clearly my orchid doesn't have an existing root system, but the lava rock was super dry. So I am going to fill up with water just so that the lava rock gets nicely soaked. And then I'm just going to repot the orchid <laughs> and fill around with lava rock. She's going in the same size pot. I'm gonna try and get the active root into the media. This one, the one that looked nasty on the outside. I'm trying to get that in. My intention is only to put in so much lava rock that the orchid and the roots are covered. I don't need necessarily to have everything all the way to the top. So much humidity is created because of the structure and the characteristics of the lava rock. I don't need it to the top. The idea being is to observe the roots going down into the pot and then possibly filling up and around, maybe with LECA, we'll have to wait and see. I haven't quite made my mind up about that just yet. But if you see me leaving a gap right here, that is intentional. What we don't want is a gap right underneath. And around roots that are accustomed to being wet, which is this one. So there'll be a little bit of, let's say a bit of lava rock Tetris happening right now. I don't want to build up too much lava rock around here, so I saved some moss that I took off from my Holcoglossum kimberlianum just to create some air around the base of that orchid. And I'm cultivating it in this little dish here. So we'll use that as a temporary measure. And if it's going to be a permanent thing, then even better. At least the roots will find their way into some nice fluffy moss before they go down into the pot. And quite honestly, I have no problem having an orchid potted up so unconventionally that it looks like she's not really potted. The point of this exercise is to save her and not go for aesthetics. Meanwhile, I've already ruined the aesthetics of this orchid, so <laughs> might as well make it look even a little bit weirder. As long as the end result is what I'm hoping for. Ah, I'm annoyed about that leaf. I am very annoyed about that leaf. I don't know about you, but I am hopeful. Let me know in the comments what you think. Personally, if the orchid has enough energy to pull through, grow that little root system out of this new growth, she will be fine, and then the next growth should be a little bit bigger, etc. But now that depends on the orchid, whether she's got it in her to actually do that. Your opinion, good, bad, or indifferent, let me know in the comments. Thank you so very, very much for watching the video. Fingers crossed. At least I've got one out of the way. There's two to go, my Catliantha little fairy, and I'm going to change my white bridle over before I have the same effect as I had with my Zagarique Wax African Beauty. Have yourselves a fabulous day on that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care, bye.